We have been tasked with delegating administrative access to our company's Azure Key Vault. We must ensure that a specific user can set advanced access policies for the Key Vault while adhering to the principle of least privilege. Which of the following options should we use to achieve this goal? A. Azure Information Protection B. Role-Based Access Control C. Azure AD Privileged Identity Management D. Azure DevOps OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think and then continue when you are ready. To achieve the goal of delegating administrative access to a specific user for setting advanced policies based on least privilege, the appropriate option is role-based access control. It allows users to be assigned roles or privileges within an organization. It ensures that only authorized individuals can perform certain actions in the Azure Key Vault. The principle of least privilege means that access is granted only when necessary, preventing unnecessary access for less critical roles. We have a hybrid configuration of Azure Active Directory. We have an Azure storage account with a file share named General Blob. We plan to allow users to authenticate to General Blob using our Azure Active Directory credentials. We need to configure the environment to support the planned authentication. We deploy the on-premises data gateway in the on-premises network. Does this solution meet the goal? OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. It is incorrect. We are collecting events from Azure Virtual Machines to an Azure Log Analytics workspace. We plan to create alerts based on the collected events. We need to identify which Azure services can be used to create the alerts. Which two services should we identify? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. A. Azure Monitor B. Azure Security Center C. Azure Analytics Services D. Azure Sentinel E. Azure Advisor OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. The two Azure services that can be used to create alerts based on collected VM events are Azure Monitor and Azure Sentinel. These services work together to ensure logs and alerts are captured from Azure resources. We have an Azure subscription that contains several Azure SQL databases and an Azure Sentinel workspace. We need to create a saved query in the workspace to find events reported by advanced threat protection for the Azure SQL database. What should we do? Well, from Azure CL, I run the get as operational insights workspace command. V from the Azure SQL database query editor, create a transact SQL query. C from the Azure Sentinel workspace, Create a custo query language query. D from Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Create a transact SQL query. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. To create a saved query in the Azure Sentinels workspace, to find events reported by advanced threat protection for an Azure SQL database, the best approach is create a custo query language query. Custo query language is specifically designed for sentinels and can directly handle queries without sending results back out. This makes it ideal for creating event sourcing queries that trigger alerts or feed into the cloud function required by sentinels. We have an Azure subscription, which is linked to an Azure Active Directory tenant. We are developing a mobile application 
which uses the OAuth 2 implicit grant type, we need to register application in Azure Active Directory. What information should we obtain from the developer to complete the registration? A. a redirect URI. B. A reply URL. C. A key. D. An application ID. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. For native applications, you need to provide a redirect URI, which Azure Active Directory will use to return token responses. Our network includes an on premises Active Directory domain, which is synchronized with Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory Connect is installed on a domain member server. We need to ensure that a domain administrator for the domain can modify synchronization options while adhering to the principle of least privilege. Which Azure Active Directory role should we assign to the domain administrator? A security administrator. B. Global administrator. C. User administrator. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. To ensure that a domain administrator for the Adatomcom domain can modify synchronization options in Azure Active Directory Connect, the correct role is the global administrator role in Azure Active Directory. We suspect that some users may be attempting to access resources they are not authorized to use. To verify this, we plan to create an Azure Log Analytics query that detects unsuccessful user sign-in attempts over the past few days. Our objective is to ensure the results only display users who have experienced more than five failed sign-in attempts. Which of the following should be included in the query? A. The event ID and count if parameters. B. The activity ID and count if parameters. C. The event ID and count parameters. D. The activity ID and count parameters. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. The appropriate query parameters for detecting users who failed to sign in more than five times are event ID and count. We have an Azure Web App and need to set up continuous deployment for Web App in using an Azure Repo. What should we create first? A. An Azure Application Insight Service. B. An Azure DevOps Organization. C. An Azure Storage Account. D. An Azure DevTest Labs Lab. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. The correct sequence to configure continuous deployment using Azure Repo would involve setting up a DevOps organization first. This structure provides the foundation for managing teams and environments necessary. This option is crucial as it sets up the environment for effective deployment configuration, ensuring proper resource management and collaboration among development and testing teams. We have an Azure subscription that is linked to an Azure Active Directory tenant. From the Azure portal, they register an enterprise application, which additional resource will be created in Azure Active Directory. A. A service principal. B. An X509 certificate. C. A managed identity. D. A user account. OK, now pause the video here. Have a bit of think and then continue when you are ready. When an enterprise application is registered in Azure AD, the primary resource created is a service principle within the Azure AD tenant. We manage an Azure Container Registry. 
We have been tasked with assigning a user a role that allows image uploads to the Azure Container Registry while ensuring the role has only the required privileges. Which of the following roles should we assign? A owner. B. Contributor. C. A CR push. D. A CR pull. OK, now pause the video here, have a bit of think, and then continue when you are ready. The most appropriate role to assign for uploading images directly to Azure Container Registry is a CR push. This allows users to upload files without requiring additional permissions beyond basic file handling capabilities. Not forget to like and subscribe.